So I actually wrote a script for this video and I'm hoping this helps me not sound like I'm constantly on the verge of tears. I'm fine, this is just what my voice sounds like. Anyway, since this drawing is based on the spirit of Halloween, I thought I would share some stories of a creepy thing that happens to many of us. Sleep paralysis. The first time I had sleep paralysis, I was sleeping on my back and some shadow figure crawled into my bed, laying on its side. I could tell it was sleeping on its side because I could see it in my peripheral vision. I couldn't move, all I could do was look back and forth. It was breathing incredibly hard and it slowly began turning towards me. As this was happening, I was thinking, does it know I'm awake? And in my mind, I swear I could hear it answer back, I know. Now people tell you that sleeping on your back will make you more likely to get sleep paralysis. I have found that the only way to really prevent it is if I sleep on my stomach, but that isn't a position that I enjoy sleeping in. In another case of sleep paralysis, I was actually sleeping on my side. I was at my sister's house, and for context, her house is sort of three stories. The first floor, which is the kitchen and living room, and two gates, one from the living room to the kitchen, and another from the kitchen to the second floor. Another important thing to note is that the house is old and the floorboards make a lot of noise when stepped on. The second floor is a single media room and the basement has two rooms. I was sleeping in the basement and my nephew was sleeping in the media room. I was sleeping on my side, facing the wall, and I then heard around 3 to 4 a.m. the front door unlocked. I immediately knew something was wrong as both my sister and her husband have to go to bed early to take the kids to school and then go back to work. No one would be awake at this time. I then heard the floorboards creak and the first gate open. I was panicked, but I thought maybe it was my nephew sleepwalking, which made me worried because I thought maybe he walked out the front door for some reason and then came back in. You make really weird logic. <laughs> you, you have really weird logic when you're having sleep paralysis because it's just a lot of adrenaline, I think. But then I hear someone walk down the first set of stairs to get to the second floor, or the media room. I then hear the door open to my room, but I didn't hear someone walk down the second flight of stairs to get to the basement. So that was just kind of a weird, you know, fallacy going on there. I once again think that maybe this is just my nephew sleepwalking, but I also remembered that I lock the door before going to sleep for this reason. <laughs> I didn't hear the second gate open and I swore that I locked the door to the room. Whatever it was, I knew it was small and it laid in the bed and was holding onto me like trying to be the big spoon. I could tell that it didn't weigh a lot though because as it was sitting and laying down, it just, there wasn't a lot of pressure on the bed um, compared to someone who weighs a lot. Um, it then got close to my ears and begins to whisper this like really weird gibberish, but the voice was layered. It sounded like there were three different kids all trying to speak at the same time. Just complete nonsense. Or maybe they were saying something, but I was just too afraid to understand. I jumped out and of course nothing was there, but that isn't the only time someone talked to me during a bout of sleep paralysis. One instance that I still remember clear as day was at my current home. I was facing away from the closet and I heard the sounds of chains clinking together and I could see my closet door opening. I then heard someone say with a low pitched grudge like voice as in the uh, noise, rest in peace. Needless to say, I didn't rest in peace and I woke up very, very frantic and sweating and horrified. But um, there have been many situations after this where <laughs> I've had lots of sleep paralysis is what I'm trying to say. And uh, one time I remember the exact position I was sleeping in because I jumped up so frantically thinking I was going to have to defend myself by like grabbing a bat or the bone next to my uh, next to my bookshelf. So I was about to like beat someone up. I was that scared. <laughs> anyway, I hope you enjoyed these stories. Um, they were very horrifying at the time, but... For me, it's kind of fun to reminisce about, <laughs> just because looking back at it, it's just really weird stories rather than being that scary. Um, sleep paralysis is really interesting, but I wouldn't wish it on anyone to have sleep paralysis. I'm not saying like, oh, go out and have this experience. It's great. Um, 
But no, during the time, it's honestly really, really scary, and it sucks when you wake up because it's kind of hard to fall back asleep. Even when you full know, like, logically, I'm having sleep paralysis, um, it's still just really scary trying to fall back asleep. Please enjoy the rest of the video as I just continue to draw this spooky spirit of Halloween.
Thank you.